Hello everyone, welcome to my channel where I try to make videos on practical tips and tricks for data science. So if you'd like to see more videos on this topic, please subscribe to my channel. Alright, so today we're going to talk about how to share your Python Plotly charts with other people in your organization. Okay, so I'm going to import the Plotly graph objects. I'm also going to import NumPy to generate data for my chart from a figure. I'm going to add a title here. All right, and now I'm going to add the data. Um, I'm just going to specify the Y values here. So this will be random integers between 0 and 1000. And I'll take 50 of those. And then I'm going to show my figure. All right, let's run this. Okay, there we go. We have our chart with our data and the Python inter uh, Plotly interactive functionality uh, over here as well. Now this is good if you are working through the data or the notebook with somebody else. But how would you share this with other people in your organization? You could, share, you could want to share this with the interactive functionality or you might just want to share a particular screenshot or a particular view uh, as a static image. So that's that's what we're going to talk about today and to do that we need to know about renderers in Plotly. So there are two types of Plotly renderers, static and interactive. And as you would guess, static ones create an image of sorts to share with other people uh, and the interactive ones share the Plotly chart itself with the Plotly.js uh, library so that whoever receives the file can also interact with the file the way you would do in a typical Jupyter notebook. All right, so let's start with the static uh, Plotly renderers. Okay, so it's very easy to specify a renderer. You just go to the show method, add renderer, and then you specify the renderer. So right now I specified a PNG renderer. So now let me run this cell using shift enter. There we go. You see the chart, but you see that it has lost interactivity. You can just download or save image using a right click. Uh, and this will save the image as a PNG image file. You also have the option to save it as a JPEG file. Um, and again, you can save the image. And uh, once you have the image, you can share it with other people via an email if you want. The other, another static format is the SVG format. So here it is. And uh, again, it has lost its interactivity, but you have the chart uh, and you can save it if you want. All right, uh, we are going to talk about one more static renderer and that will be the PDF renderer. So once you specify the renderer as PDF and you run the cell, there we go, we see a link to view the PDF. There it is. This is, this, is a chart, the same chart as we were looking at before but now it's in a PDF format. And where this renderer really comes in handy is if you want to share it as a PDF, so you go to File download as and pdf via latex so if you want to if you want to share it as a pdf uh, i would recommend using this renderer all right so those were the static renderers now let's talk about the interactive ones the first interactive renderer is a notebook and uh, you just run it using shift enter and here we see a plotly chart with the plotly interactivity 
and this would be useful if you want to share the whole notebook as an HTML file and how you would do it is you would go to file download it as HTML and if you want to share that HTML file with others I would recommend using the notebook renderer now if you use the notebook renderer and you save the whole notebook as an HTML file by using the notebook renderer you would be saving the associated plotly.js uh, charting library so when other people receive this they will be able to interact with your chart here the other thing to point out is because the plotly.js library is going to be saved with this file the file size would be a little bit larger but the people who receive it will be able to use this even if they're offline meaning not connected to the internet which leads me to the other renderer type which is notebook underscore connected if you run this you get the output similar output interactive plotly chart uh, it is recommended to use this particular renderer again if you're saving this entire notebook as an HTML file to share with other people the on the positive side the size of this file would be smaller because it'll it'll connect to an online CDN library to get the plotly.js file but obviously you would make, need to make sure that whenever you use this file you are or the other people uh, you share it with are connected to the internet without it this will not work all right okay the next renderer type is the browser renderer now you would use it if you want to view this chart in a bigger full screen format so I've specified the browser as a renderer and uh, let me execute the cell there we go it opens up the chart with the Python functionality uh, in a separate tab on your browser so if you're in a meeting and you, if you're share you want to share a chart with a lot of intricate data points this would be the best way to do it okay uh, you can also specify uh, specific browsers so I have I'm running Safari right now let me specify Chrome as a browser uh, one specific caveat is that for whatever reason you should have Chrome running on the side if you don't then this will not load the chart onto Chrome so anyways so we have specified Chrome as a renderer and we execute the cell and there we go we get the plotly chart with its interactivity on Chrome in a separate tab you can also use uh, Firefox if you want uh, but I don't have that installed on this computer right now so I'm not going to execute this the next interactive renderer I want to talk about is the iframe renderer and this is really useful if you want to share an interactive plotly graph with other people so let me run this cell there you see this chart on your in your Jupyter notebook for sure but what it has also done is it has created a folder called iframe figures on your default Python directory and it has saved the figure in a separate HTML file so if I open this what I get is a Python plotly interactive chart and it is a separate HTML file that you can email anyone you want now when you save it as a as an iframe renderer file this HTML file contains the plotly.js library information to create recreate this chart when somebody else opens that file they can also do it offline if you use the iframe connected renderer it'll give you a similar output a plotly chart here a separate file here uh, the big difference you might notice is that is the difference in file size uh, and this is because when you use only iframe as the renderer 
it creates the file, but it also has to save the plotly.js library plotting information. And that is why this file has a much larger file size than the one we created later with the iframe connected renderer because it does not need to save the plotly.js uh, library information. But obviously you need to make sure that if you saved the figure using the iframe connected renderer, uh, you need to make sure that you have access to the internet and are able to connect to the online CDN library uh, from which to plot this chart correctly. Okay. So those are some of the plotly renderers that I wanted to share with you because I found those useful. I have obviously not talked about every single one, uh, but how would you find out which renderers are available to you? So for that, I would go to plotly.io. I'll just call the renderer method. So we see our default renderer is plotly.mime type plus notebook. So I should point out plotly.mime type is one type of renderer. Notebook is another type of renderer. So if you want to use multiple, you use the plus symbol to specify multiple. But what if I want to change my default renderer? What if I want the browser renderer by default so that whenever I just call the show method, without specifying a renderer, it opens the chart in a separate tab. So to do that, what I would do is, I would change it here, uh, pio.renderers.default equal to browser. Let me execute the cell. No, oh, spelling mistake. There we go, we've changed the default renderer. Now, if I run this code without specifying browser as a default, as a renderer in the show method, it will open the chart on a separate tab in a browser. All right, that's all I had to cover regarding Plotly renderers. I hope you found that useful. If you want more information regarding Plotly renderers, you can go to this link on the Plotly website and uh, you can learn more about the renderers framework uh, along with examples. I hope you found the video useful. If you did, please leave a like and a comment. And if you want to watch more videos covering the practical side of data science, please subscribe to my channel and watch out for future videos. Thank you.